What is happening, everybody? It has been a long time. It's been a very long time, and I'm sorry. I apologize for the time away, but life was crazy. Actually, Taylor, the wife, was off all this week, so it threw me into a whole loop. I didn't do my daily edits. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just spent time with her. I spent time with her and the kids, and I loved every bit of it. But anyways, you saw the title of the video. This is a How to Fish a Frog from OWA. I don't even know what the title is yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> but you know what it's about. Now obviously, this, 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 this words are hard. This video is gonna be very different from any other how to video that I've done at least. Because what I'm gonna do today is take you out on the water with me. I'm gonna walk you through how I fish the frogs the practices that I use, and actually, you know, have some proof behind them. Fish were caught today. Fish were caught. Stay tuned. You're going to love it. I'll see you guys in a minute. Good morning, everybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I already did that. I mean, I already did my intro, you know, because I shot the intro at the end of this, much later in the day. So right now, I have no idea how it went, and I have no idea what I said in the future. So... But like I covered in the intro, I'm doing a bit of a how-to frogfish. How I like to frogfish today. So we're going to cover some things. And as you can see, I'm wearing my PFD so I don't get roasted. Like I said, I've been trying to get better about this. So I'm trying to get better. I'm getting better. I'm wearing my PFD today. I'm the first one on the lake. Someone else is pulling up now. So let's get out there and let's start fishing. Not even how to frog fish. I don't even know what I'm going to call this video yet. I guess how I frog fish. How old OWA frog fishes. How to fish the scum frog. Frogs. I don't know. What I got today. First off. This is not a confidence color. I'm going with a different color this morning. Just to kind of fish around a little bit. And I do plan on switching over to some confidence colors. But we're going to put on a few different frogs today. We're going to throw on the, uh, the launch frog. From Scum Frog, I'm going to throw on the Trophy series as well. I've had a lot of success with the launch and the Trophy. And then I'll throw on a Poppin' Frog too. Because that uh, those Poppin' Frogs are definitely what got me a start with frog fishing. So with the Scum Frogs, okay, Launch Frog in particular here, what I like to do is give it a hard twitch sometimes two one two something like that when you do two like that it will dive and it will come back up and it acts and it looks very much like a frog swimming i don't know if you've seen frogs swim and how they dive under and come back up it looks very much like that now you get a little bit of slack in your line small twitches you can walk the launch frog okay you can walk it however Walking a frog is not, it's not in my wheelhouse. It's not something that I prefer to do. I like more of a pop. I like to, I guess, you know, a little slower approach. But I do like to pop them. I like to give them a couple, you know, hard twitches. You're gonna want a heavy rod. You're gonna want something that's pretty stout to where you can actually get that snap in the action of the frog now not just for the action of the frog but also for those hook sets you're going to want those for the hook sets too you don't want something that's going to be too soft you're going to want something that is going to be able to handle the hard hook set and to put those big hooks those big frog hooks in that fish's mouth okay you're going to want something that is going to be able to handle all that so now my setup, I've got a seven foot, heavy, fast action rod. Now, most of you guys know, I am an influencer with Favorite. I'm not sponsored by Favorite. I love Favorite. I've been rocking with Favorite for over a year now, and I'm gonna continue to rock with Favorite. So I am throwing the seven foot, big, sexy, heavy, fast action. That is how I roll, that's what I'm throwing. I have the extra heavy fast, I've thrown 
always heavy and fast when it comes to frogs. That's what I've always done. So, now as far as your setup, besides just the rod, do you need a fast reel? Do you need a fast gear ratio reel? I don't believe so. I don't think that you absolutely have to have, say, an eight gear or faster. You know, I know Cast King makes those nine gears. I think Abu's got, you know, the rocket. I don't know. They're just stupid fast, stupid fast gear ratios. Do you need them? Not necessarily, because a lot of the time you will sacrifice some drag power with those faster reels. Now, the faster reel is nice if you are in some thick stuff to where you can get that fish out of there faster, but drag is just as important as speed. And then the line. Line is probably the most important thing along with the rod when it comes to gear, when it comes to the terminal tackle that you're using, braid. You're going to want braid. There is no stretch in braid. It is going to have a much better hookup ratio. Now, as far as what kind of braid, you know, some people use four strand, some people use eight strand. I like eight strand. Eight strand has just got a more round diameter to it. It's a little more like fishing line. Whereas four strand is more of a, four strand is gonna be good if you're, you know, throwing into some really heavy grass thick pads, anything like that, because four strand acts almost like a hacksaw. I mean, it's it will saw through. You can feel the difference between an eight strand braid and a four strand braid very easily. Four strand braid is just a little more rough, a little more coarse. I do like eight strand, like I said, it's a little more round. It's got more of a uh, fishing line type feel to it. So that's what I like. You see how I'm working this frog here? I mean, to no avail, nothing's happening right now. Fishing's kind of sucked the past couple days. Probably throw on the different frog here. Get him! We got him! Look at that. So this is where it's nice to have that faster reel because I did not get a very good hook into him, I thought. We got it. He's feisty. Right in front of some people pulling up. I'll take that. I'll take that. How'd you get these hooks? Apparently I got a better hook into them than I thought. Just trying to eat that. Literally tried to eat that frog. Okay. There we go. Threw up in the grass. A couple twitches, let it sit. Boom. First frogfish of the day underway. He's an acrobat. So everything that I just talked about came into play right there. As far as the rod, the reel, the, the line, everything. It was an awkward hook set. I didn't even get to really lay into them as much as I would have liked. That's where your braid is gonna come into play because you're not gonna have any kind of stretch on the braid, a heavier rod, that can handle that hook set. Fast tip, snaps back faster, helps to drive those hooks in. Braid, ripped them right out of there. And then this is, I mean, it's a favorite Solus XCS. It's the eight gear ratio reel. So it was fast. It's got great drag to it, but I'm telling you, I don't, you don't necessarily need to get the fastest reel. Um, you know, my my new PB, my 911, came on an SLX DC, which has got 11 pounds of drag, and it was a 7 gear ratio. But it was on this rod with that line. 
same style of frog, just different color. So, anyways, enough talking. Let's get back to fishing. So I guess kind of going back to the action of the frog, it does matter. One thing that I like to do when I'm fishing is for the first, when I'm throwing a frog at least, when I'm throwing a frog, for the first half hour to an hour, I will try and work one type of cadence, you know. And when I say one type of cadence, I mean, you know, the couple of twitches, the one to two, two or three, something like that. Short, subtle, let it sit. I mean, subtle in a sense, you know what I'm saying. But let it sit, hit it again. Let it sit, hit it again. If that does not produce anything for me, then I'm going to move to a more erratic action, okay? It's very similar to, sorry, I know I'm bending all over the place here. It's very similar to something that I like to do, you know, when I'm fishing with John or fishing with Chris. And it is, let's do contra contrasting fishing styles. Someone's working top water, someone works deep, you know. Someone works, you know, something fast, someone goes with something more finesse. And let's figure out what is going to produce the bite. So I'm going to work a frog like this, let the ripples kind of dissipate, hit it again. Just like that. We kind of want that chug sound. That's the great thing about these. The launch frog in the trophy series is they have a really good chug sound to them. Really good chug. Very similar to a popper, but without as much water displacement as far as throwing water out in front of them. Now something else that's very important to note about frog fishing. When you're working that frog, before you're going to twitch it again, you want to try and reel up that slack. So creep your reel and try and tighten that slack up because the fastest way to lose a frogfish is to have slack in your line and not reel up that slack when they hit. Another way that you can easily lose a fish on a frog is to hook set too quick. You want to wait like a half second, almost a full second sometimes. You don't want to set immediately, okay? They need to get that frog in their mouth and they need to close down on it. Now I know some guys that will wait until they feel pressure. And I've done that plenty of times, especially night fishing, night fishing with frogs. I'll wait until I feel the pressure of that fish pulling and then I'll set. That can be pretty nerve wracking for some people because you worry that that fish is going to spit that frog. All the time they're coming up, taking it, and swimming down. We feel that pressure on your line, slam it home. You've got to hook set hard. You cannot use a half, half hook set. I mean, you have got to. This is not like finesse fishing. Obviously, you know, that sounds dumb, but you know, finesse hook, you just pull up on that slack. These are big hooks. They're extremely sharp, but they're big hooks. And you've got to drive that thicker gauge wire into that frog, into that fish's mouth. So you cannot skimp on your hook sets. All right, got the trophy series tied on. I'm tied on the toad color. Probably one thing that I forgot to mention that is one of the most important things with frog fishing is the knot. And here we go. Perfect example of a good knot. Tide Palomar. Tide Palomar knot. That is what I use for frogs. I think that is going to be your best bet as far as a knot goes. It's a lot easier with braid as well. So, trophy series. This is a very similar to the launch. This has got a really good chug to it. And this is about how I work it. One to two. The ripples dissipate. So 
sometimes I'll go a little more subtle with it. The Trophy Series does not walk very well. I will say that. I've had guys ask me about that. They're like, how do you walk it? Well, I don't. I kind of treat it like a popper. A popper that can't walk. See, it kind of dives and swims forward like this. Another big debate with frogs, as far as modifying them goes. You guys talk about, you know, bending the hooks out, bending the hooks up. It does help. It helps quite a bit. What you sacrifice with doing that, though, if you bend your hooks out, is throwing into heavy cover. You are going to have better hookup ratios, but you're going to have better hookup ratios in that cover as well. Now on all my scum frogs, I don't modify the hooks at all. I leave them like they are. These frogs come through cover extremely well, and that's what I like. On my spro frogs, I do bend the hooks out. Not up, I bend them out. Bad cast. Because they do sit so flush with the body, I like to bend them out a little bit. Much better hookup ratios. Um, it's a little more rigid body than the scum frog, which you're going to get better longevity out of, you know, a frog with a little more rigid body, but you are going to want to modify your hooks. Now this is my second trophy series of this year. This one's actually the 5 8 ounce. I had the most success this year. I mean, I only had the half ounce in the trophy series until I ordered this one. So, but I caught probably 40 plus fish in two months on the half ounce trophy series. However, being such a soft body, the hooks have cut into the body. Now, I can probably super glue it, and I probably will. Put some super glue on there, some mend it, something to help, you know, seal those little cuts back up in the body bring it back to life but I do not modify the hooks on the scum frogs at all Ooh, I think that was a turtle I think I had a turtle underneath it oh. he came back for it he swirled underneath and he came back for it look at that let's get this guy up here it's a better fish too a much better fish guys I think you know what called him up it was a little more erratic action it was not a turtle <laughs> it was not a turtle We go 16 and a half. Not bad. Not bad at all. Probably two pounder. Hey, sorry about your sore on your lip there. Good fish. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Love it. Really didn't know how this video was going to turn out. Hook in the body of the frog. So what you want to do here, just slide that hook out. Reset your skirts. Because it will affect the action of the frog if you do not reset the skirts. Like they are normally. So, well, that was a cool leap. He swirled on it and I thought it was a turtle. Because I've been seeing turtles out here. I just kind of worked it a little slow, didn't rip it away out of there. He came back and he munched it, just slurped it down. But like I was talking about with, you know, finding your cadence, what I started doing that time was working it a little faster, doing that three 
that two, three, three, four. Like that right there. And just let it sit. After I'm working it quick like that, sometimes I'll follow it up with, you know, the more subtle, the one, two. So I'll work that three, four, and then one, two. So in case that erratic three, four gets their attention and gets them to come up and look, when they see it move, because they've come up to look at it, and instead of moving it really quick like that and ripping it away from them, that one, two just gives them just that much longer to decide if they want to bite, and most of the time they will. So we fit this area pretty hard for a little bit now. And what I've done is I've done the erratic action, I've done the slower action, nothing. If nothing happens, move on. Move to another area, okay? You can always come back to it, but move to another area. Try and find something fresh that hasn't been disturbed as much by your frog and by fishing that way so let's move on down now some of you might be wondering alex i got a kayak but i can't stand up in it can i do this sitting down yes you absolutely can that's how i did it last year cast out there you can get the same action out of that frog Sitting down, you can get the same action out of that frog as you do standing up. <laughs> get up here get up here you ain't gonna shake that you're a good fish too you're another good fish mm -hmm. oh yeah oh you're bigger you're bigger let's get this out of you thank you oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna measure you. Eighteen. Zeroed. Two ten. Yep, yeah, that means the other one was about two pounds. Heck yeah. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Oh, heavy drag, fast reel. Get out of there, get out of there. Hang on now. Hang on you. No, you do it. Get up here. Whoo! Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! Whoo! Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Oh. Oh yeah, that was a freaking rush. I don't think you're as big as the last one. You're probably closer to the second one. But let's check you out. Go 17 and a half. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, bud, thank you. Thank you so much. You wanna be my friend?
keep biting my thumb. Come on now. Oh, in the thick, thick. Whew. I tell you what, I thought that one had me stuck. Because she was not moving for a second. I know I've touched on it already, but that is the importance of proper equipment when frog fishing. Good rod, good line, good reel. That's what you need. It's been a good day. So that's it. The day is done. We're out of here, okay? Fish were caught, great freaking day. Look at this lake, look at this freaking lake behind me. Guys, here's my big thing about frog fishing. Do not get frustrated. Don't get frustrated to the point where you give up. That's my biggest thing. You're gonna get out there, you're gonna have days where you miss, okay? Keep at it, keep freaking going, okay? Don't get frustrated, don't give up. Keep throwing that frog, keep working it, Find what works best for you, okay? <sighs> Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Feels good to be back. By the way, I got some old videos coming, some night fishing videos. You'll see them. So I'll catch you next time we're on the water.